Hello friends, uh, this is Pastor Sunday greeting you from Kiev, Ukraine. It's an opportunity to introduce to you History Makers Bible School, a school that is operating in several nations of the world, including London, England. And I want you to hear the experience of graduates of this Bible School, both in England and in America, so that you could know what we're talking about. Because I believe that if you really want to make a difference in your life, and with your life, that this is a school you want to go to. And it doesn't take much. Just takes one Saturday from you in a month. One Saturday a month, you could come and join us in the Bible school in London. And that will be the biggest investment you've ever done in your life. I don't doubt it. Now, I have two gentlemen here with me that will help us to shed some light into what this ministry is all about. And what the gospel, I mean, what the gospel of the kingdom is all about. And what change you should expect in your life after you go through History Makers Bible School. Now we have Abby. How are you, Abby? I'm very well. Thank, Thank you, you for sir. being here. Thank you. And we have Sino from La Alabama. Mississippi. Mississippi. I, well, welcome. Thank you, sir. Tell us, how did you come across Pastor Sunday and uh, History Makers Bible School? Well, it was uh, actually in 2007. I've heard about you through uh, several people. And um, that particular year the lord spoke to me specifically to come to the fast usually in here in the ukraine here in, in the ukraine you all have a summer fast yes. uh, here for 10 days so i was led to that fast and it was the impact that uh, meeting had on my life that literally uh, changed my view on life itself on life itself on life itself on um ministry and on everything um I'm, I'm very inquisitive and very observant, so I had the opportunity to observe you, uh, your life uh, within those 10 days. And from that time till now, I felt like I went back to uh, primary school, um, even though I've been in the ministry for over 25 years. My God. As if you are going back to kindergarten. kindergarten. Yes, wow. Sir. Yes, sir. So um, I remember asking you a few questions when we met personally. You know, one of the questions I remember asking you is, you know, why why do you live this way? Why do you have such a drive to live for God this way? And I remember your response was, you know, the the day you discovered what what Christ did in your life and in your heart and how He forgave you your sin, you decided to sell out your life, to spend your whole life until there's nothing else to give, and. Um, I'm telling you, it's been not just a privilege, it's been more than an honor to have met you, a whole church, a whole ministry, uh, my wife, family, the whole nine years has changed because of my coming in contact with you. Now, you are a pastor in Mississippi. Yes, sir. What uh, is the need for a pastor to go to another school, especially when you've been in the ministry for 25 years? Well, um, you know, I've also had the privilege of listening to a lot of pastors all over the world as well as ministries part of what you do as you grow up in, in Christ but what distinguishes uh, God Embassy what distinguishes History Makers Bible School from everything else I've seen out there is the concept of the kingdom and let me explain that uh, when I was in the Bible school at New Jersey um, I remember you saying these exact words. Often people shoot the word, seeking first the kingdom, seeking first the kingdom. But it seems like so many people don't understand what that phrase is. And you explained it. You said, number one, seeking the kingdom is seeking the character of the king of that kingdom. Or in other words, seeking the character of Christ, becoming more like Christ. And when you look at what's going on in the world today, especially in America, and my heart breaks for that nation as as great and wonderful that nation is, my heart breaks for churches, for pastors, because one of the reasons why people, many reasons why people come to, people have so many reasons why they come to church, but Christ-likeness is not one of them. Wow. They come for self-centered reasons. And a lot of these people are sincere, they're genuine. It's just that they don't know otherwise because that's what the pastors have taught them. So they are being taught, uh, God will meet your needs and God will do this. And it seems like, they become the center of their lives. It's still about them. It's still man-made. But in History Makers Bible School, you're taught differently. You're taught that, number one, life is a gift. You're taught that life is a privilege. And you're taught that life is given. 
something that you and I will have to give account for when we die. So the life that we're living is to be lived to serve the king, to serve his purposes, to serve his mm. desires. Not self. Purposes. Not self. So everything moves away from self and becomes Christ-centered. And um, since that, I think that was one of the basic principles that we're missing in my life as a pastor, missing in an entire church. I felt like I had a heart for God. I felt like I hungered for God. I felt like uh, my heart was true towards God. But I knew this missing link put a stop to everything we were doing in the church. And some of those challenges, I, I actually shared it with you, until the kingdom concept came. Kingdom concept where I now understand, man, these people that God has sent to me are not in the church to my serve my, my vision. Jesus, my Rather, Jesus. it's the opposite. I am there to serve their oh, vision. Jesus, that Jesus, every child Jesus, of God Jesus. has a vision. Every child of wow, God has wow, a calling. Wow, 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 and it's a wow, unique wow. calling. And it's a wow, calling wow, to change wow, the world. Wow, 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 so wow. our members, I, I now see the Jesus, freedom Jesus. In, their, in their faces. I see the freedom in their hearts. I mean, I feel like we started a whole new church. My God. And my now God, people are finding God. their calling with joy I and used excitement. To yes, sir. My God. There's such a liberty of spirit that we have never, ever witnessed. I mean, you really don't have to do much now because people are learning to take responsibility. But the impression you have, because we're going to show this program in Europe, yes, but the impression you have in Europe here is that in America you have it all. Why should you listen to a pastor from Ukraine? Well, you know, what I have to say to those people is that you can't mechanize God. You can't formalize God. There's a reason why the success here is so unique. And let me, let me just give a few points. Number one, it's your life. My, the you lifestyle. Know, the lifestyle. And let, my, you know, my wife actually came to a place because something, uh, and I can talk about her because I know her, she has a sincerity about God that is just so pure. In fact, even before I met her. You are married to a white American. Yes, I am. So she didn't want anybody to interfere with her love relationship with God. It was sincere. Wow. You would not find a trace of hypocrisy. In fact, hypocrisy turns her off. Wow. And even though I was married to her, she was internally depressed at the condition of the church. She felt, who could be trusted? Can this life even be lived? When you hear a lot of the ridicule reports about pastors all over the world, you begin to wonder, is the gospel really real? So she got to a place where she became depressed internally until she came to the Bible school. And all of a sudden, she was free on the inside. Like a flower began to blossom. Yeah, she began to blossom. That freedom came back. Her love relationship with God came back. Thank and you she, Lord you know, you, you, when you see her pray, she just says, Father, thank you that I can see what it means to be like Christ. Are you serious? It was through you. It, honestly, it was through your lifestyle, through your character. Sir, I mean, you know, you, you look at the world today and you wonder, what are these men modeling for us? I don't see Christ-likeness. We don't see the character of Christ. And the Lord told me that Christianity without Christ-likeness is a sham. And that is why we're afraid to preach the gospel, because if we're telling people, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, it's the power of God that changes lives, and my life is not changed, then I make the gospel a lie. Yeah, but it's, it, it, yes, and it's not just you, all your leaders. I mean, I have two centers in our church where we deal with women who have alcoholic problems, drug addictions. We even have a whole facility for men, and it's taking years. A lot of those people are former pastors <laughs> that are in those... Uh, uh, drug uh, rehabilitation centers <laughs> and they seem like they can't get free but now you come to ukraine and you hear people who have been drug addicts prostitutes 10, for, 20 even years even there's one for 35 years yes. <laughs> and within weeks months yes. they're becoming they world they, transformers yeah. and i and god explained that to me that because of the work he has done I in see. you it's the work is the depth of the work that God has done in you. That is what the Holy Spirit is able to use to impart lives because God cannot do through us what but he hasn't been able to accomplish in us. In us. Yeah. Yes, sir. Amazing. Yes, Amazing. Sir. Abby, what's your experience? You went to the Bible school. Uh, you went to the Bible school in America, but you went to the Bible school in England. Why did you go to that school? Okay, Pastor Andy, um, thank you very much for the opportunity. And um, I want to just express to you the joy that it is to know that your ministry has come to the UK. Um, as I'm sitting here, I'm not just burdened or thinking only about, and even all the years that I've lived in England, over 40 years, 
Um, I'm not just thinking of black people. I'm thinking of white people. I'm thinking of Chinese. I'm thinking of Indians. And I'm thinking of Muslims. You know, um, the work I've done in the past involved some of these groups. Yeah. So now, but the point is this, and and in terms of why I came to the Bible school, I would like to just assure you that I'm not a follower of men. So, Pastor Sunday, the very first time I saw you on TV, um, you know, a, a black man preaching to a church with 95% white, I wasn't, it was a fantastic, it was a good thing, but I, I just thought, well, this is another one of them, another one of the wow. many, yeah, many Are people, yeah, it? absolutely, this was, this was, Wow. And, and, and maybe and and I should perhaps let you know that the British people are very skeptical, and you are so thinking the same thing. yeah, exactly. So that's I why I'm see. bringing it up. You know that there are probably people like this watching this program who have the same view. You know, this man is just like all of them, and and the reason why I'm sitting here is because I've learned that you're definitely not like them. And so now, how did I come to know about the Bible school? Very briefly. Um, you know, I was attending another, um, you know, very excellent Bible college, as well as work and as well as all the other things I was doing. And, um, you know, a former leader, because we used to be, you know, deacons in a Baptist church, um, was um, also attending the same Bible college, but he started to attend History Makers Bible School. As well. As well. And, um, and you see, the thing is, before that time, I had seen you, an interview with, with um, uh, I think it was Yemi Balogun interviewing you. And I, it was at that point that I started to actually listen to 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 some of the the, the things that um, you know that you know that, that that you were saying, and I really started to understand the, your testimony. Then I made up my mind to come to the Bible school, but never fulfilled it. And I'm just hoping that there will be people here who would you know maybe learn some things today and be prompted to come to the Bible school, and maybe we we'll postpone it and I just want to encourage them not to do that because as a result of that I missed a lot of things mm -hmm. but anyway now eventually you know through this friend I joined the Bible school late but I was able to catch up on on this stuff and past Sunday it's been a wonderful experience I'm not a, I, 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 I'm not a man pleaser I'm not I don't follow men all those big ministers that come to the UK I don't follow them you know because yeah because I mean, the Bible is the, it's so clear in scriptures. It's for the, Bi yeah, the Bible says very clearly, look, that even when, even when it comes to ministers, when it comes to preachers, you look at the fruit. Not just what yes. they're saying, yes. but you look at the fruit. And the fruit is so obvious to so many Christians, and yet they flood to these places, they flood to these churches, they go and give money, you know, and, and you know, it, one just wonders why. And, and so I was very skeptical. I haven't gone to the Bible school, Pastor Sunday. The things I learned, the things started to now give me hope. For the nation I love, Great Britain, started to give me hope. This is a nation where, you know, where the churches, I, I, I don't even need to, to, you know, to, 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 to talk about it too much, but everybody knows it. The church is disrespected. And yet, when I encountered your ministry, I'm not a man pleaser, but it, it's just that it's a fact. When I encountered your ministry, you are highly respected by the many, many people that come to your church, by the many... Thousands, hundreds, thousands of people that come to your church, highly respected. So, um, in terms of the, you know, the Bible school, I started to learn, you know, things that I never ever imagined before. And and I know my brother has said some of those things. I don't want to start going over those things. But you know, I I 100% endorse what he was saying because that was that's very similar to my own experience. You know, but the point is, it gave me hope for Great Britain. But also, so you actually started believing that. There could be transformation in Great Britain. Pastor Sunday, definitely, definitely, definitely. Because well, many I... Christians seem to have given up. They think, well, this Christianity that we believe in could only work in Africa, where we're coming from. It cannot really work in uh, Great Britain because uh, we don't see the results. Pastor Sunday, can I just, from a British viewpoint, can I also say that many don't even think it's coming from Africa because we see, it's as if some of the terrible things that's coming out of America not I only has see, come to Britain, I but has also see. gone to, to Africa. Okay, and so we right. see them on TV. Right. We see them on TV and that's we just right. wonder. We just, right. What has happened, Pastor Sunday, is this, as, as far as I understand it. The British had the light. Well, the Europeans had the light. They went to Africa. They called Africa the darkest continent. There were many wonderful British European people that went to Africa and did fantastic work. Gave their work. lives, it, actually. It, yeah, like David Livingstone, for the, yeah. for the gospel. But as a group... In my view, they did harm to Africa. 
Yeah, they did harm to Africa as a group. But what has happened now is that out of Africa, God has taken you. This is, I'm not a man pleaser, I don't, but God has taken you and planted you in a nation in Eastern Europe, which is despised by many in the Western world. Eastern, a nation in Eastern Europe, <laughs> and not only has God been using you to show the world that the gospel really works in the lives of individuals and in the life of a nation, not so out of Africa. In the least expected place. In the least, yeah, absolutely. A despised place, despised, despised place. You know, one would one would have thought, oh, you should come from America, come from Europe, ah, but yeah, see, but yeah, but it's coming from Eastern Europe. See, you know, despised, and and God took an African, you know, from the darkest continent, took an African to a despised place in Eastern Europe and showed that a nation can be changed. Pastor Sunday, I'll just give you a statistics that it that ministers in the UK will be familiar with. 10% of the people in the church do 100% of the work. Mm. But in your church, 50%, yeah. 50, at least 50% of the people, because yeah. I saw them, yeah. I saw them, 50% of the people are in, actively active. yeah. involved in ministry, actively. Sometimes and 60, 80%. Pastor Stone, I, I believe, having seen some of your people, I haven't heard them, that's, that even some of those that have been nine months in the Lord yes. should come and teach some of the pastors that we see on TV yeah. in the UK. That's right. They should come that's and right. do that. May I hear that a lot. I hear that a lot. Why would you recommend somebody watching this program now to come to the Bible school? To Eastern Makers Bible School? The reasons why I recommend somebody to come to this Bible school is I feel like the body of Christ at large, and I'm not trying to be critical of the body, but it is a fact that we have pulled away from, uh, from the heart of God. You know, often we have to, as pastors, we have to often ask ourselves, what is God up to? What is God doing? What is the Spirit of God endorsing? And I think we've we've lost the concept of why Jesus came. We've lost the concept of the gospel. And if pastors can be honest, our members are dried up within. A lot of people out there are frustrated. And I know that even when it comes to pastors, uh, they may be sincere pastors. In fact, I believe that there are a lot of sincere pastors who cry after God, but internally they're frustrated because they're not seeing the fruits in their membership. They know the people are burnt out. So now they're coming up with all kinds of gimmicks to hold people, to keep people, and they know it's not working. In the next few years, I don't know what they will have to teach anymore. So one of the major reasons why I ask people to come to this school is... In including pastors. Including, especially pastors, because pastors have a lot of influence, is to recapture the purpose of the gospel, to recapture the kingdom concept. Number one, to capture the fact that Everything we are, everything we have, hmm. belongs to God. Jesus. Everything we are, everything we have, the gifts, the callings, the uh, ability to think, life itself belongs to God. You know, between birth and death, uh, everything we have in this world was entrusted by a creator. My God. And we have to understand that this is the secret to life. When we lose ourselves when we lose ourselves for the kingdom you know you said something i had the privilege of hearing this in japan and you said this you said if life is not about chasing things if life is not about things then what is life about life is about seeking the kingdom first seeking his character seeking his ways seeking his will and seeking his principles for living so if we haven't lived for christ we've lived a wasted life and I wonder how many people can really stand before God at the end of time and say, you know, Lord, I lived for you. Because a lot of the things we have in church is religion. So coming to this school will bring you back to the core, to the basics of why Jesus came. And secondly, it will open us up to understanding what discipleship of nations is. And, and that may take us a, a, a longer time to talk about. But in, in Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 through 20, it talks about go and make disciples of nations. Now, in most churches, we've limited that to soul winning. We've limited that to evangelism. Let me take a history case, for example, Guatemala, Armenia, Nigeria. These nations are known to have so many Christians. Uh, Armenia, for example, has about 90% Christianity. 
But look at the infrastructure, look at the social system, look at the political system, look at the educational system, look at arts and entertainment. Catastrophe. The, the values are, 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 are demonic in origin. There are no godly values in there. So it's like a salt shaker. Okay, you have a salt shaker that you use at home, and everybody can relate with this. The church has become like a salt shaker. The people of God are like that salt locked up in a salt shaker. You said uh, our members are like prisoners, and the pastors are like the wardens, holding in and hoarding their gifts and ability. So you taught us, no, the impact of salt is not when it stays in the salt shaker, like we uh, are confined to a local church. The power of salt is when it leaves the salt shaker, and its real power is its effect in the systems of this world. So, I mean, if my life could change, if our whole life could change, if our church could change, if new air, new vision, new direction, plus a, a tangible presence of fruits could be visible in our church, there is no reason why no pastor should come to this. All you need to do is just to say, listen, I missed it. I'm willing to humble myself and learn. And I feel like, you know, God Embassy, History Makers Bible Church, Bible, is, school. Bible school, is a model. It's a model for the whole world. And I'm not just saying this to please anybody. It is a fact. It is a model, a restoration of what God is planning to do throughout the whole world. So I just want to encourage every pastor, every leader, you cannot afford not to be a part of History Makers Bible School. It literally transforms your whole being, your whole life, and give you a new purpose and direction in life. Thank you so much. Why do you think anybody watching in Great Britain should want to come to the school? Okay, my first assumption is that they care about the country. I'm assuming, whether you're a Christian or not, that you do care about the country. Um, and if you're a Christian, you know, you ought to. I mean, in fact, it's scriptural that you should care about the country, irrespective of whether you're a pastor or not. So the reason why you should come to the school, I think partly is because the statistics that relates to Pastor Sunday and Pastor Sunday's church. And I'm just going to give an illustration, Pastor Sunday, if you don't mind, to, to people in Great Britain that I think will help them to really understand, to really, really appreciate what it is that God has done through you. You know, just imagine, you know, um, a Pakistani man with a very thick Pakistani accent, accent because, yes, because yes. your people have told me yes. you know, that, though I think you, you know, you're, you're speaking Russian perfectly, but, yes. you know. So just imagine a Pakistani man with a very thick Pakistani or accent. Or Indian accent. Or Indian accent. Coming to Great Britain at the age of about, and, and at the age of about 25, 26, starting a church, and within 10 years, Ken Livingston, the mayor at that time, became a Christian in his church. Ken Livingston, the mayor, becomes a Christian in his church, and there are other top political people that became Christians in, the, in his church. Then, his church has over 20, about 20,000, 20 to 25,000 people, and the vast majority of those people are white. The vast majority are white. Then, apart from that, Think of all the different regions in Great Britain, all the different shires, Derbyshire, you know, Lincolnshire. They have, they have churches there, and they have you know, a centers that, you know, people with crack addicts, you know, people who are crack addicts, for example, people who are hooked on cocaine. Through the ministry of this church, they, they, they're drawn in, they become saved, they go to that church, and they're completely and totally transformed. You know, on TV, we read about these ministers. People go to their ministry, and apparently they're performing, you know, miracles and so on. And, and many of us really wonder about this. But these are miracles that, that your next-door neighbor would tell you about. about. <laughs> yeah, would tell you about. That my son, who was a thief, who was a crack addict for 10 years, 10 years, through this ministry, is now a completely and totally changed. And women, I mean, I've, 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 look, the, the thing is that there's so many of them in your church. There are just so many, so many of them, you know, transformed in wonderful ways. Some of them, to the extent that people who are depressed, and I know that there are probably people who are depressed now watching this program who have no clue as to what they should be doing in their life. People who are depressed, suddenly they find a solution, partly based on some of the things that my brother from the U.S. has been sharing, you know, that, that we learned from the Bible school. They come, they, you know, they, they, they changed. They changed. So think about that. Throughout the whole of Great Britain, these ministries are taking place. 50% of the people in the church actively, act, 
actively involved in the ministry. And, and Pastor Sunday, one further thing, because I told you I'm very skeptical about people. And so what I would do is I would go on the internet and find out all the gossip about them. And I came across some gossip about you, you know, which, you know, which I, you know, probably other people might be, you know, might be aware of. I would say to those people, look, this gossip is coming maybe from Christians whose fruit you should ask for. You should, if they've been Christians for 20, 30 years, say, to, okay, well, you're coming from the U.S. And by the way, the U.S., is responsible for most of the pornography in the world. And yet, this man, this, this man that you're criticizing here, he stood up in his country and he said, pornography on TV in this country, we're not having it. We're not having it. That is the extent. You know, so, 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 so if you're skeptical about him, I would just say, come and see for yourself. All the money you've been donating to all these churches and, and so on and so forth because, they, because they, you know, they give you the impression that somehow when you give money, then God will solve all your problems. Please <laughs> save those money. Save all that money. Come to Kiev. There's no pressure. I mean, come to the Bible school, definitely. But also come to Kiev, and then you will hear several hundreds of people who have testimonies testimonies about how their lives have been transformed. Like, like, I don't know if it's my brother that said it, but it certainly is true that in the New Testament, one of the things that we saw and, and the proof that, that God was really doing things was changed lives. Change. Lives that, you know, nobody would change. have thought anybody could change, but they were changed, you know, and, and, and they started to follow the new way, the way, you know, and Pastor Sunday, I'm just so full of excitement about, and I, and I just can't encourage people enough, you know, whether you're white, whether you're, and I know many Muslims have written off Christianity for all sorts of reasons. When they come, and they come to Ukraine. Or to the school. Or to, or to the school. To, but definitely come to the school, but please, please, please plan come to, to come, come to Ukraine just to see for yourself. The school will teach you a lot of things because many practitioners, that's what I loved about the school, by the way. Many practitioners, some of them who have been addicts and prostitutes for years and so on and so forth god touched them and so so we have real practitioners people who have raised up raised up pastors you know raised up pastors or pastors and 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 the quality pastor sunday please the quality of the christians i'm sorry to, i mean I, I, i'm just so full of excitement the quality of the christians has really given me hope that it is really possible that this thing is possible. The quality of the Christians in your church, you know, although, I mean, you want them to be much, you know, to have a higher level, but the quality <laughs> is impressive. Impressive. Amazing. Thank you so very much, everybody. Well, it's just one Saturday every month. One Saturday in a month. It's not a big deal. Please, go to that website you're seeing on the screen right now. Call that number, and we are waiting for you. Look forward to seeing you. Thank you guys for coming. Blessings.